Hello friends, this is the third lecture of our male reproductive system. <coughs> we are going to discuss about the male sex hormone. So let's get started. The testes secret male sex hormone, they are called androgen. Now what is androgen? And by definition androgen means that any steroid hormone that has a musculizing effect including testosterone it is known as androgen. Right? Now what is musculizing? means right musculizing means musculine in nature or in appearance got it so what are the list of the androgen so first thing is the testosterone then the active form of testosterone is the dihydrotestosterone and the androgen next one is the androstenedione right out of that testosterone is in more abundant and it is formed by as you guys already know from the interstitial cell of a lady or lady cell now let's see about testosterone uh, let me give you a clear picture of a histological slide of having a test uh, of testes see in this slide there are two compartments that are you already know this one is the tubular compartment this one is the single seminiferous tubule it is known as tubular compartment it has a sartoli cell and germ cell along with it this one is the lumen and the basal portion of a tubular cell has a germ cell spermatogonia and they divide, redivide and make a mature sperm and it is finally released inside the lumen, right? The, hor the area between these two lumen, it is known as paratubular area or intertubular area, right? So let me show you a picture of it. See, this is the cross section and these are the three seminiferous tubules. So these are the intratubular compartment and the rest of the portion that is present in between the tubule it is known as paratubular compartment. Now inside this paratubular compartment it has a Leydig cell like this. This L stands for Leydig. Right. So Leydig cell basically that present in a newborn they secret testosterone and it basically absent after that during the childhood it secret no testosterone and again it present after puberty and it secret testosterone all right now let's discuss the correct uh, chemical nature of a testosterone the chem as far as the chemistry is concerned as you guys see from this diagram it has a seven no, sorry 19th carbon steroid right this one is the 19th carbon steroid what changes that we actually made in the cholesterol molecule first changes that we made is we cut the 20 and 22 bond it is 22 20 22 lias it or desmolase then we again cut one more bond that is between the 17th and 20th carbon right by 17 20 lias and hydroxylase at a 17th carbon and the next one is the dehydrogenase at carbon number 3 these are the chemical changes that we make in a cholesterol molecule now as far as the transport of a testosterone is concerned 99 percent is in the bound form out of that 65 percent with the sbg that sbg means sex binding globulin and 33 percent is the albumin now the reverse is actually true for the estrogen 65 or 70 percent is bind with the albumin remaining with the sex globulin binding uh, sex binding the sex hormone binding globulin and metabolism is as far as the metabolism is concerned it is basically androsterone and the estrogen the testosterone is eventually converted into the estrogen by aromatase enzyme now androsterone is 17 keto steroid what actually happens in androsterone again there is dehydrogenation at this level and it make a double bond over here and because of this double bond present over the 17th carbon it is known as 17 ketosterone it is androsterone now synthesis of a testosterone as far as the synthesis of any steroid hormone is concerned we already go through in a very good detail in synthesis of a steroid hormone so you already know how the androsterone is synthesized so these are nothing but a revision of that particular lecture <coughs> inside the Leydig cell first cholesterol molecule converted into the pregnenolone by a desmolase enzyme that is 
2022 lies right this one is the pregnenolone molecule in this pregnenolone molecule this 3 beta hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase take place dehydrogenation take place this dehydrogenation is take place at third carbon this 3 stands for the number of the carbon so this one is the third carbon so dehydrogenase will remove the H and it converted into this kind of molecule that molecule is known as progesterone now this is the progesterone molecule it has a 22 carbon attached to it this one is 19 this one is 20 and uh, uh, 20 and 21 right so in this progesterone is 21 carbon atom same as pregnenolone now what happens there is a 17 hydroxylation enzyme will work over this molecule and make a hydroxylation at the 17th carbon it makes 17 hydroxy progesterone after that what happens there is a lysis of this carbon chain occur the bond between 17th and 20th carbon it is known as 1720 lyase it's also the function of the 17 hydroxylase enzyme it is a dual function it is also known as a dual enzyme so this bond will be detached and this converted into double bond O right that is known as endrostenedione now how endrostenedione will convert into the testosterone this is the new thing to you now inside this endrostenedione this is a type 3 17 beta hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase will take uh, enzyme will occur and uh, will work and it make OH bond over here it make a testosterone so only difference between endrostenedione and testosterone is at the 17th carbon is hydroxyl group present in the endrostenedione there is a keto group is present this is the group is known as keto group what it now let's see the yes action of the testosterone now as far as the function of the testosterone is concerned it has a two type of function one during fetal life another one is after puberty what it actually do during the fetal life in fetal life it is basically responsible for sexual differentiation and the descent of the testes now what is sexual differentiation sexual differentiation is mean the differentiation to form male external genitalia right after puberty is basically responsible for the secondary sexual characters that we discuss in our subsequent slide now as far as the sexual differentiation is concerned what it will do is causes formation of the external genitalia it is responsible for the formation of the external genitalia that is penis and scrotum these two are the external genitalia of a male it is also responsible for the formation of internal genitalia indirectly by forming the dehydrotestosterone the active form of the testosterone now what is internal genitalia there are list of the things that we discuss in testis anatomy epididymis vas deferens seminal vesicle and prostate these are the internal genitalia now how sexual differentiation occur so initially Wolfian and Mullerian duct are present in both the fetuses male as well as in female so any fetus has a two type of duct one is Wolfian duct another one is Mullerian duct both are present now in order to develop a male or the male development is required the presence of three hormone remember this three hormone one is the testosterone another one is the active form of the testosterone that is dehydrotestosterone and third one is the mullerian inhibiting factor mif it is also known as amh anti mullerian hormone both are the thing mih or amh both are the thing same thing now how this male uh, development will be take place what trigger the male development that triggering factor is the male fetus has a y chromosome right that y chromosome is absent in female fetus obviously inside this y chromosome there is a very specific region that is in the short arm of uh, located in the short arm that y chromosome has a sex determining region that is sry now what is this SRY this sex determining region is actually the transcription factor this transcription factor is basically responsible for increase the production of the hormone that we mentioned that is testosterone dehydrotestosterone and Mullerian inhibiting factor so 
sex determining region that is present over the y chromosome is basically the triggering factor for formation of a male right so if there is no sry then there is no any transcription the of the sry gene and there is no production of the any hormone so if there is no hormonal input then the female structure develop got it so internal settings of all the fetus is to make a female got it the factory reset that is given in the mobile right? factory reset of every child every fetus is to become a female but in order to make a male there is one triggering factor that is present due to the presence of the y chromosome if the y chromosome is there then and then male will be formed if y chromosome is absent then female is formed no matter how uh, no matter the consequences right so female development is a factory reset of a child right if there is absence of the y chromosome or absence of the sry in somehow if in somehow if the hormone are not formed then female will be formed got it now how this changes will take place now as far as the sexual differentiation is concerned this hcg this human chorionic gonadotropin plus lh this both has a more or less same effect will work on a fetal sartoli cell now this fetal sartoli cell or the male fetal sartoli cell will form mif what is mif mullerian inhibiting factor or anti mullerian hormone once the sartoli cell will secrete mif that mif will regress the mullerian duct now from the mullerian duct female genital um, female internal genitalia will be developed so in so the regression of the mullerian duct will leads to absence of the fetal female internal genitalia so there are two type of duct that we mentioned in our previous slide Muller, this mullerian duct is going to make a internal genitalia of female and the wolfian duct will make a male geni internal genitalia right so in order to differentiate into the male we have to regress the mullerian duct and we have to stimulate the wolfian duct so this is about the regression of the mullerian duct now how the wolfian duct gets stimulated again the same hormone hcg and lh will stimulate the fetal leydig cell again male fetal leydig cell it will secrete the testosterone and this testosterone itself is a stimulating factor for development of the wolfian duct got it so once the testosterone is secreted in the male fetus it will stimulate the wolfian duct and this wolfian duct is ultimately make a male internal genitalia that is epididymis vas deferens seminal vesicle and prostate now this is about the internal genitalia what about the penis and scrotum what about the external genitalia so in order to make a external genitalia testosterone will be converted into the dehydrotestosterone by the enzyme phi alpha reductase so phi alpha reductase will work over the testosterone and make dehydrotestosterone and this dehydrotestosterone will differentiate the two structure urogenital sinus and genital organs and make a male external genitalia what it this is all about the sex differentiation now see if the y chromosome is absent if the fetus is female then no more synthesis of sir sry gene related transcription so there is absence of all these three hormone mif testosterone and dehydrotestosterone so if there is no mif then the regression of the mullerian duct will not form and mullerian duct will eventually make a female internal genitalia if there is no testosterone then wolfian duct is not stimulated is rather regress and if there is no dehydrotestosterone so the male external genitalia will not be formed it is as simple right so sit uh, so the all the fetus has a tendency to develop male female internal and external genitalia if there is absence of the stimulating factors like mif testosterone and dehydrotestosterone this is about the function of the testosterone inside a fetal life now what is the function of the testosterone after puberty that is formation of the secondary sexual character so first we enumerate the secondary sexual character the changes take place in the internal genitalia changes will take place in the external and internal genitalia then 
changes in the voice changes in the hair growth then the there are some changes that is take place at the mental level then changes in the body configuration and finally changes that is take place in the skin so let's see one by one external genitalia as far as the external genitalia is concerned you have to remember two things one is penis another one is scrotum so what testosterone will do testosterone will increase the length and width of the penis and as far as the scrotum is concerned it increases the pigmentation and rugosity now internal genitalia it causes the seminal vesicle to get enlarged and secreted secretion seminal fluid and prostate and bulbar gland when it become enlarged and secrete their secretion now what changes will take place in the voice voice become musculine hypertrophy of a laryngeal mucosa occur obviously and enlargement of the larynx so at the level after the puberty because of the testosterone the voice of a child if it is a male child then it is changed to the masculine voice what would happen to the hair growth as you guys see beard start appearing beard appears pubic hair now this is the difference than the female pubic hair is basically triangle with apex up pattern now what is apex up pattern so as far as the pubic hair is concerned the pattern is different in male and in female let me show you the pattern see in male there is a triangle having apex up in female there is a triangle that is apex down so testosterone will lead to changes in the formation of a pattern of a pubic hair it causes apex up pattern then in gen increase general body hair yes like anil kapoor it increase general body hair and male pattern baldness yes jason statham is basically male pattern baldness now let's see what changes will take place in the mental confirm mental level the person become more aggressive and interest in the opposite sex will be developed what will be changes in the body configuration shoulder become broaden and typical male pelvis is appear what is male pelvis we discuss later now muscular growth will be appear person become more muscular as far as the skin is concerned is basically increase the thickness of a skin increase secretion of the sebaceous gland and that increase secretion of the sebaceous gland will ultimately leads to the acne yes the acne that you see in the male uh, in the boys it is basically because of the testosterone <coughs> so acne is the most common feature in the male adolescent when the body is first becoming introduced to increased level of testosterone now after several years of the testosterone secretion skin is actually normally adapt to the testosterone in a way that it allows it to overcome the acne so in the early adulthood or in early young age of a male acne will be present but after several years acne will be not uh, not happens because of the our body become adapt to the uh, more secretion of the testosterone metabolic effect of the testosterone the protein it is a protein anabolic effect it causes increase synthesis of the protein and decrease breakdown of a protein it will leads to protein anabolism it again increase the rate of growth increase musculature after the puberty it causes uh, means the musculature after puberty so if you inject synthetic androgen to a person it will improve the muscle strength all right that's why testosterone is also known as a youth hormone this thing may be asked in a comment youth hormone testosterone is a youth hormone so you should write it down in the same session that testosterone will leads to protein anabolic effect it will leads to increase musculature after the puberty or testosterone will leads to more amount of the muscle development is increase the muscle strength so in order to improve the muscle strength athlete will use a synthetic androgen that is known as youth hormone now the effect over the electrolytes so as far as the effect on electrolytes is concerned the testosterone is also a steroid so it has more or less small amount of action as same as mineralocorticoid in the minor amount so what is the action of the mineralocorticoid again it is increase reabsorption of a sodium now effect over the rbc what is the effect on rbc is basically increase rbc count how 
testosterone basically it does not appear directly stimulate the development of the red blood cell but it is indirectly increase the erythropoietin level got it so testosterone will increase erythropoietin that's why hematocrit is higher in male as compared to the female now effect on bone now as far as the bone is concerned bone has a two portion one is the bone matrix another one is the calcium salt the organic and inorganic component of the bone now testosterone will increase both so increase bone growth and it will leads to specific effect on a pelvis i mentioned in the secondary sexual character it make a very specific pelvis for male that specific pelvis is known as a funnel like shape of a pelvis now what is this funnel like shape of a pelvis let me show you on a diagram this red color portion is the male pelvis and just pelvis that beside the male pelvis is the female pelvis this one is the male pelvis this one is the female pelvis you can easily notify the changes that is taking place in between these two pelvis right this one is wider this one is broader and narrow right so let's enumerate the changes male pelvis is basically very narrow length of a pelvis will increase and increase the strength of a entire pelvis for load bearing and funnel like shape is basically present in female it is also known as ovoid shape of pelvis now the mechanism of the action of the testosterone now as far as the mechanism of action of a testosterone is concerned again testosterone is a steroid hormone so it is basically act via diffusing inside the cell membrane inside the cell so its receptor is actually present inside the cell present over the cytoplasm so you need to write it down all the thing that you remember in the intracytoplasmic receptor that we discuss in our receptor and signaling let us revise a bit so testosterone will diffuse to the target cell inside the target cell testosterone is converted into dehydrotestosterone this dehydrotestosterone will bind with the cytoplasmic receptor then make a receptor hormone complex this hormone receptor complex will diffuse this will diffuse inside the nucleus inside the nucleus it will bind with the hormone responsive element this hormone responsive element will ultimately leads to increase formation of a related transcription factor this transcription factor will leads to formation of the mrna that mrna will ultimately leads to the increased protein synthesis and these are the if and you have to write it down the effect of a testosterone right now feedback regulation feedback regulation again is nothing new hypothalamus will secrete gnrh can you remember the nuclei of hypothalamus that secret GnRH? We already discussed in anterior pituitary, right? It is medial preoptic nuclei. Median or medial preoptic nuclei will eventually secret GnRH. That GnRH will go to the anterior pituitary. It will stimulate the secretion of LH and FSH. Now, what LH do and what FSH do? LH will stimulate the Leydig cell. That Leydig cell will eventually increase the secretion of the testosterone. What FSH do? FSH will stimulate the Sartoli cell and the Sartoli cell will stimulate the spermatogenesis along with secretion of inhibin. That inhibin is basically inhibin B. Got it? Now, as far as the negative feedback inhibition is concerned, the inhibin will ultimately cause negative inhibition to the FSH secretion and testosterone will give a negative feedback inhibition to the LH secretion. Right? And one more thing I would like to highlight in this diagram that the GnRH secretion is again it is a pulsatile release. If you infuse GnRH in a continuous dose, then its stimulatory effect on the anterior pituitary will be not seen. So there are less amount of LH and FSH secretion and ultimately less amount of testosterone secretion and less amount of spermatogenesis. So in order to stimulate the test is we have to give GnRH in pulsatile form. Got it? And testosterone also has an inhibitor effect on GnRH as well. Now this is all about the feedback regulation. Now what about the applied aspect? Let's see the gonadal dysfunction. 
now consequences of a deficiency of the testosterone will depend on the age of the onset you see testosterone has a some function in the fetal life testosterone has a some function in the puberty level right so where actually the deficiency of the testosterone will take place that will determine the actual consequences of the dysfunction right so first is the second and third month of a pregnancy then in the third trimester of a pregnancy then during the puberty and after the puberty so if there is a deficiency will take place in early life or early fetal life in second or third month of the pregnancy then there is a ambiguity in the male genitalia now what is ambiguity ambiguity is basically the reduce the actually the um, एम्बिग्विटी का मतलब होता है कि वो स्पष्ट नहीं होता है एम्बिग्विटी ऑफ द मेल जेनिटेलिया मीन्स द वी कैन नॉट आइडेंटिफाई दैट इट इज़ अ मेल जेनिटेलिया इट इज़ नॉट क्लियर राइट एम्बिग्विटी मीन्स इट इज़ नॉट क्लियर सो इफ द डेफिशंसी विल बी हैपन्स इन द अर्ली प्रेगनेंसी देन मेल जेनिटेलिया विल नॉट बिकम क्लियर राइट द डेवलपमेंट इज नॉट दैट मच ऑफ क्लियर इन थर्ड ट्राइमेस्टर इन द लेट हाफ ऑफ अ प्रेगनेंसी देन द टेस्ट इज इज ऑलरेडी फॉर्म right the problem is in descent of a testis so problem is basically in the descent of a testis this condition is known as cryptorchidism right so what is cryptorchidism cryptorchidism is the dis problem in the testicular descent now in puberty what happens when the testosterone is deficient in the puberty then the poor sexual secondary character the poor secondary sexual character and unichoid feature now what is unichoid feature now unichoid feature is basically reduce or intermediate sexual characteristic by definition unichoid means it again ambiguity is more or less like is unichoid it is reduced or intermediate sexual characteristic ambiguity means it is not clear so uh, in broad term both are the same ambiguity it is not clear and in unichoid it is a intermediate or reduced sexual characteristic now if the testosterone will lost after the puberty then the secondary sexual character will be appeared but there is a loss of libido the person will have a less interest in sexual intercourse erectile dysfunction the penis will not get erected and infertility what it now let's discuss the cryptochort uh, crypt Uh, this is uh, a cryptorchidism what is cryptorchidism is basically testes fail to descend from abdomen into the scrotum so basically the testes will be formed at the in the abdominal cavity so during the fetal development testes will be develop inside the abdominal cavity and it normally migrate into the scrotum so basically it is synthesize or it is develop over here and this testicular develop descend through the inguinal canal so it reach to the scrotum so it depends on this descent is depend on two thing one thing is mis that is mullerian inhibiting substance and another thing is the testosterone so if descent does not happens then the testis will remain inside the abdominal cavity so if the testis is remain inside the abdominal cavity it is exposed to the higher amount of core temperature right so as we discussed that the spermatogenesis is basically prone to temperature right if the temperature is more then the spermatogenesis will decrease so person that having cryptorchidism basically has a less amount of spermatogenesis or rather absent spermatogenesis now let's see what happens in male hypogonadism like again clinical picture will be depends on whether testicular development uh, deficiency develops it is it is because before puberty or after puberty right so if it is due to the testicular disease this uh, testicular deficiency is basically due to the testicular disease the problem lies in the testes then there is increased circulating gonadotropin that condition is known as hypergonadotropic hypogonadism remember that if the problem lies within the testis there is a problem in the testis then the, there are more amount of the gnrh secretion to stimulate the testis so that condition is known as hypergonadotropic hypogonadism 
now if the test is lies in the pituitary or the hypothalamus then there is decreased circulating gonadotropin that condition is known as hypogonadotropic hypogonadism right gnrh is not actually secreting in a pulsatile manner in a enough amount so it does not stimulate the testis anymore and causes male hypogonadism that particular thing is known as kelman syndrome now i already told you about the kelman syndrome in the pituitary lecture right what is the kelman syndrome in the kelman syndrome there is a deficiency of the migration of the gnrh nucleus that is actually present during development inside the nasal area right so in kelman syndrome there is a delayed or absent puberty because of the gnrh loss its function and impaired sense of the smell because of the problem in the osmo uh, this a uh, odorant receptor or odorant now that is present over inside the na- uh, nose right so what is the actual deficiency lies in the kelman syndrome so there is one gene i already discussed the kelman syndrome in very detail in pituitary lecture in kelman uh, syndrome there is a gene known as kl gene that is deficient so so normally what happens the gnrh is actually the neurons the set of a neuron that is actually formed inside the nasal cavity and during the development the cell will migrate from the nasal cavity to the hypothalamus and eventually reside inside the medial preoptic nuclei right and if it is present inside the medial preoptic nuclei then and then it will release the gnrh so in or so in deficiency of this kl gene kal gene no more migration of the gnrh will take place from the nasal cavity to the hypothalamus so ultimately no more gnrh secreting neuron is actually present inside the medial preoptic nuclei so no more gnrh secretion at the time of the puberty so development of uh, the development of the testes will be deficient and spermatogenesis is deficient secretion of the testosterone is deficient and ultimately hypogonadism occur now what happens if the this deficiency of the testosterone is present before puberty so if the removal of the testes is actually happens before puberty then the eunuchism occur that is incomplete or less clear sexual differentiation so no testes it will lead to permanent sterility the person is not able to synthesize sperm in enough amount because there is no testes and the development of the external genitalia will decrease if the loss of testosterone or loss of testes appear before puberty so decrease development of the external genitalia there is penis and scrotum and it also decrease in the internal genitalia the uh, growth of a seminal vesicle and prostate gland will also be reduced again decrease secondary sexual character abnormal bone growth basically increase height because testosterone is basically responsible for the fusion of the epiphysis so if there is no more testosterone so the person height will be increased more and more so increase height due to delayed union of epiphysis and ultimately bone is also become weak and thin if the loss of testes occur after puberty then what happen after puberty as far as the sexual organ is concerned they are basically regress slightly in size no because they are already formed at the time of the puberty so regression in it's very slight then the voice slightly regress from the base quality and there is a loss of muscular and hair production and thick bone will be seen decrease sexual desire but the sexual desire is not actually lost erection can still occur but ejaculation will take place very rarely so after puberty if a person lost the testes erection is there but ejaculation is not happens right so when a man is castrated the castrated means removal of the testes if the man is castrated some of the male secondary sexual character is revert which are the characteristic that is revert that is sexual organ size voice then ejaculation sexual desire are revert now one more thing that is given in again on in recent edition that syndrome is known as froelich syndrome now what is this froelich syndrome it is basically a genetic defect in hypothalamus remember the term it is a genetic defect in hypothalamus that is unable to secrete gnrh it is not same as kelman syndrome it is genetic defect that is present there is inability to secrete gnrh so abnormality of a feeding center as well 
there is abnormality of a feeding center as well so person causing person to eat very greatly so the satiety center will not be stimulated causing person to eat very greatly so uh, obesity will be appear along with the unigenism or unigenism right obesity is seen because of the abnormal feeding center it is also known as a hypothalamic unigenism or adipose genital syndrome right Be person become adipose and there is a defect in genital development so basically it is also known as adipose genital syndrome it is a new thing that is given in a ganon and the importance what is importance it is not important it is importance what is importance importance basically inability of a man to develop or to maintain an erection for a sufficient rigidity for satisfactory sexual intercourse again the definition of the importance is like that inability of a man to develop or to maintain an erection of a penis for a sufficient rigidity for a satisfactory sexual intercourse right so what are the causes of the importance first thing the nervous stimulation that is required for erection that is parasympathetic now right erection is basically the function of the parasympathetic and the eject ejection and emission is basically the function of the sympathetic so in order to develop a proper erection we need proper parasympathetic nerve supply so there is a trauma to the parasympathetic nerve supply it will lead to importance deficiency of the testosterone and certain drugs alcohol like nicotine alcohol and antidepressant so person having nicotine or person taking alcohol or person taking antidepressant have a importance there are chances of importance and the last one is the vascular disease and this importance is successfully treated with the phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitor that is known as sildenafil viagra we already discussed in how the erection will take place right so this is all about the male reproductive system thank you